Dearly beloved in the Lord Jesus Christ, we are at it again, finding God and diving into God's word to share together and praise our God together, meditate and align ourselves with the word of God. Welcome to the Palm Sunday. We are at a season when we celebrate our Lord Jesus Christ's triumphant entry. And so let us pray as we welcome Palm Sunday. Father God in heaven, thank you that you sent your son Jesus Christ, our Savior, our Redeemer and our Liberator. Thank you God that we have this moment so that we align ourselves with your will and so that we shall be able to glorify your name in every situation. Thank you that we do this in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, God is good that we have this moment again. This is one of the movable events, meaning that it's not so fixed. We, each year that comes, we shall have different dates, but it's a very significant event in the life of the church. And the season is Palm Sunday. We have just been in a season where we were commemorating what our Lord Jesus Christ went through, the 40 days and 40 nights in the wilderness, and that is the Lent season. And now we are diving into the season called the Holy Week. But before we enter the Holy Week, we have this Sunday called Palm Sunday. This is when we celebrate, this is when we commemorate Jesus' entry into Jerusalem. Having done work for a period of three, about three years, Jesus is winding up his business, earthly ministry. You know, Jesus did ministry. It is what we call earthly ministry. When he was born here, he walked here, he served here, he preached here, he suffered here. And time comes, he finishes his, his ministry and he finishes it in a city, a city, Jerusalem. And so we celebrate, we commemorate the triumphant entry of our Lord Jesus Christ into Jerusalem. And this event is covered by all the gospel writers. Now, Matthew has his, you know, he puts it his own way. Luke and Mark, Luke and John, they all cover this event because of its relevance, because of its significance. And so when we read, we see Matthew chapter 21, talking about the triumphant entry into Jerusalem. Luke chapter 11, Mark chapter 11, Mark chapter 11 speaks about the same. Luke chapter 19, verses 28 to 44, talks about it. And then John chapter 12, verses 12 following. And so this is a very significant event that we celebrate as Christians. Now, for purposes of the context, before we say a few things, let us look at Matthew chapter 21. Let us use Matthew because all of them cover it as I've already said. Now, triumphal entry. That when they had approached Jerusalem, and this is Matthew 21, and had come to Bethphag at the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the village opposite to you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied there and a colt with her and tie them and bring them to me. If anyone asks, if anyone says something to you, you shall say, the Lord has need of them and immediately he will send them to me. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. And this is also a point of interest, speaking about the prophet. And when we talk about the prophet, we are diving back into the Old Testament. Say to the Lord of Zion, that's verse five, behold, your king is coming to you, gentle and mounted on a donkey, even on a colt, the fall of a beast of burden. The disciples went and did just as Jesus had instructed. Now friends, go on and read this portion because it talks about Jesus getting this animal and he's seated on it and he's walking, facing Jerusalem. 
And the Bible says that as he goes, crowds are gathered ahead of him and they shout something that is important that we mentioned on the Palm Sunday. Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is, the, is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And so just like we read this every year, we read it again this year, we read it again this season, that actually Jesus entered Jerusalem and the people gathered, people collected, and they were singing together and they were praising God together. And one other important thing is they laid clothes. Some other versions, I mean, some other books like Mark and Luke will mention clothes, spreading them on the way. And one other thing that they do is that they cut tree branches and they wave them. And the reason why we have these palms waved and so we praise the Lord that actually it is actually Palm Sunday. So this is a celebration, friends. This is a commemoration, the beginning of the Holy Week, like I've already said, culminating into the, the biggest event, the central event, and that is the Easter story, the resurrection story. Of course, without which church cannot be. Church exists because of events like this. And so we keep commemorating them, repeating them, repeating them, because they are our identity. The reason why we stand out, Christian faith, are events like this. And so we celebrate Jesus' entry into Jerusalem, singing. And I've already mentioned three things. One, tree branches cut and people waving. The palm trees cut, the branches cut and people waving. Meaning that actually they are happy. It's a joyous moment. This is why it is called triumphant. It's a victorious entry. Of course, Jesus is doing his ministry and now it is culminating into something that is now the climax. We praise the Lord. And then one other thing is laying down their clothes. I've already said that. And he walks as, you know, coming as king. And then one thing that actually comes out, I've already just read here, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. People sing, singing, singing. Hosanna. And Hosanna means save, O oh Lord. And this was a timely message because these people were under captivity. These people were under slavery. This, they, were, they, they, they were under a foreign rule. And so they were expecting someone to come and liberate them. Now, even during our time, we sing Hosanna because we desire the salvation of the Lord. We desire the redemption of the Lord. We desire the liberation of the Lord. And so the person that is quoted, and that is Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. This is where we find this. Because it connects very clearly. And in Zechariah 9, 9, the Bible says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout in a triumph, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. He is just and endowed with salvation. This is great news on a Palm Sunday. When we celebrate that he comes, he's endowed with the salvation, humble and mounted on a donkey, even on a colt, the fall of a donkey. This is exactly what we read in Matthew. But listen to me, that he's endowed with salvation. Now, why we talk about these things, why we sing about these things, why we keep repeating these things, because our Lord, is endowed with salvation. And so this is great. This is a wonderful moment for you and for me. And so we pick our own lessons, just like I've always said, that when you read a story like this, we pick lessons that will help us while we are here on earth, while we are walking here on earth. And as we, we walk here, we prepare for the higher journey, going to heaven. But remember that we are still here. And so we pick significance here as we watch Jesus entering Jerusalem and there were events that happened during the Holy Week and Matthew lines them up and he mentions several things that happened during this Holy Week. The conversations that Jesus had with the people, the, the Holy Conversation that Jesus had with the religious leaders, the conversation that Jesus had with everybody that was there along the way and in the place of worship like in the temple. Now this one helps us 
to hold conversations with the people to, you know, to talk about godly things, even with the leaders who govern our country, who come who govern our, our states. And so friends, Jesus sets us an example. During the Holy Week, Jesus is doing great things in the temple in Jerusalem. And so we all know that actually this is a very, very important occasion. It is the foundation of our faith. And so the Palm Sunday culminating into the Easter story, it is why we exist. It is why we are here. So Jesus uses an animal. That is a donkey. Of course, they are talking about the cult. And in our Christian faith, this is important because our Lord Jesus Christ is peace. Our Lord Jesus Christ is humility. He would have come riding on a horse as a king. He would have come riding on another animal. But during those years, of course, during those times of wars, he would have used a horse. But as a lowly king, as a peacemaker, he comes riding on a cult. So we pray, ladies and gentlemen, we pray, my brothers and sisters, that the Prince of Peace who was prophesied in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, the Prince of Peace there, you'll find that actually he comes to give peace and he comes riding on a donkey. So using this, it was a, symbol, a symbolism of peace and humility. So we invite ourselves, I invite you, we invite everyone to commemorate this day knowing that actually Jesus is the Prince of Peace. He comes not with tumult, not with a lot of, you know, not with pomp, but he comes lowly, riding lowly, and he brings peace to Jerusalem. So Jesus knew during this time that he comes what was going to, what was going to face, but he proceeded all the same. I pick a message from here, friends. Suffering was awaiting him in Jerusalem. Many, many things, contradictions with the religious leaders of the time, but he was heading there. Now, it teaches me, friends, that never to give up because of what you anticipate. Jesus walked there even when there were things that were not going to be for his benefit, for his welfare, but he faced there because there was intention that was said by God himself that actually he would die. And so he faced there. He was determined. I like the determination that the Lord Jesus, had, Jesus Christ had. Could you be determined as well? Could you be committed to your cause? If something is for the good of your family, if something is for the good of your nation, if something is for the good of your church, if something is for the good of your workplace, and you know that it's ideal, it is needed, even when it has strings of suffering, even when it has strings of agony, our Lord Jesus Christ lives as a lesson. He headed there even when he knew that the people were not going to welcome him. Even when he knew there was trouble ahead. So our Lord Jesus Christ moves there. So I have written it down for myself that Jesus knew what he was going to face. Praise the Lord. But he proceeded all the same. Now I, I appeal to you. Is it for your good? Is it for your church? Is it for your family? Is it for your... Now, the reason why you wake up actually even very early in the morning, even when it's not palatable to jump out of your bed, but you jump out of your bed because of something good, you know, actually, it is cold, but I must get there. It is hot, but I must get there. It is difficult, but I must walk there. Praise the Lord. This is the message here. That our Lord Jesus Christ gets there even when it is things are not going to be to work well for you. For him. We are now in a world where people will do whatever it takes to do it because they're going to benefit at the end. This is where the challenge is. Someone wants to go to a certain a position because there's something that good that is going to want to, to benefit from there. But our Lord Jesus Christ, the humble king, the prince of peace, he lives as a lesson. This is the lesson that even when it is not going to benefit you directly, even when it can be a suffering of sorts, there are moments when some of us have not even bought shoes. Pray the Lord. But because we desire the best for our children, you pay school fees. Hallelujah. And to the parents who do that, we praise you. 
And sometimes you are a, a leader, sometimes you are a person of, of, of responsibility. There are certain things that you will do, not because you are going, we are going to be directly a beneficiary, but because you know the mission for which you exist. So may God bless you and may God watch over you as you think about this that the Lord Jesus Christ did. Now, my final point that I want to make here is the people shout. How did they shout and what did they shout? You remember? Hosanna in the highest. It's a call of salvation. It's a call for redemption, which exactly is shown in the book that we read in Matthew chapter 28, in chapter 21, verse 8, and they, you read on there. Now, they, as, as they shout it, as they shout it, the very people, praise the Lord, who shouted Hosanna, that the very people, some of them shouted, crucify him. This is a huge lesson as well. You know, we are living in a world full of contradictions. Can I repeat? We are living in a world full of contradictions. Today is yes. The next moment is no. Today is I love you. The next time, the next moment, hate. And someone can say that I hate him. And what you ask him, when you ask him, why do you hate the person? I hate him naturally. Can you imagine that someone can hate you naturally? Because of what? And so we are living in a world full of contradictions. And so I pick it from here that the people that shouted, Hosanna in the highest, save that welcome king, welcome, that the very ones who said, among them, there were those who shouted, crucify him, crucify him. So if friends, I come with this simple message that aware that we're in a world full of contradictions, what then must we do? What then must you do? I leave the question with you because I may not have an answer for you. And so friends, Christian believers, people of God, Christians, whoever you are, you should welcome the Lord Jesus Christ and be willing to follow him always. Be willing to follow him always. Shout Hosanna today, but shout Hosanna even tomorrow. Say praise God today. Say praise God even in a difficult situation. Say hallelujah now. And say hallelujah even when you are rich, you are well off. Even but because there are some people who will humble themselves because things are not going well. So they want to trust God to change their situation. But the moment the situation, God changes it, they forget. Now, friends, may God who sent his son, Jesus Christ, like we read John 3:16, that for God so loved the world that he gave his only, only son, Jesus Christ, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. So I make an invitation that Christ is the king. He came on this day of palms, shaking palms, and people singing and people praising him, that God will enable you to do your salvation work. Care about you, but also get there even when things are not sweet. Get there, finish the assignment, even when you know that it's not directly going to benefit you, but finish the assignment. God calls you, his servant, God does, calls you, his worker, go and work. Do the best for your, you know, for humanity. Do the best for your family. Do the best for your church. Do the best for you. Do the best, even when it does not benefit you directly. So may God bless you and watch over you of during this uh, we are entering into the Holy Week and may God, God bless you during the Holy Week and so that the events unfold and give you joy, give you glory, give you happiness, give you cheers as you serve selflessly in the name of God the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.